Good morning, everyone. Having uh, going to get the right PowerPoint slide going. So in the meantime, um, I'm looking for step by step. If somebody can give me a song, number five. That's it. Number five will be our first song. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's, uh, before we start singing, let's uh, go to God in prayer. Holy Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful day. Father, I thank you so much for um, your compassion, your uh, your value of us, your love for us, Father. And as we uh, gather together this morning and we sing songs of praise to you and we speak to one another through the songs that we're singing, I pray, Father, that everything that we do and say will bring glory to your wonderful name. Father, we love you so much and we just thank you for being who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Number five, let's sing. <clears throat> Maybe we have it? Okay. <clears throat> oh God, you are my God. been a very long time since we've sang this song so I bet you guys could do it without looking at the screen but in case you can you can still look at it so I hope this is uh, an old familiar tune that we're all familiar with and uh, uh, we'll sing heartily um, as we go through this our God he is alive there is beyond the azure blue Oh. 
following this stall, we will share in the communion service. <clears throat> Lord, I lift your name on Morning, children of God. So now's the time we're going to be taking the communion. If anyone hasn't grabbed communion, we have an attendant walking. So this time that we have here right now, what does this mean to you? How do you, how do you partake of this? You know, in, in, in my life, it's, it's been different, you know, like different times. I think of different things. I act differently. I mean, to be honest, sometimes I've breezed right through it and didn't think it at all about it. Just went through the motions. But I think in the last couple years for me, what, what this has meant for me was comfort security and peace and I know that you know the world that we live in right now we have a lot of animosity we have a lot of turbulence I fly a lot now and I get a lot of turbulence and I don't like it but even through all of that everything that is going on right now you have to be able to center yourself. You have to be able to remember who's in control of this whole thing. And no matter how bad it gets, and I, I know, you know, we, we, we say God's going to take care of us. And I 100% I believe that. He will take care of you right up until you die. And then he'll take care of you afterwards. We're not promised to live forever. We're not promised to not have animosity. We're not promised not to be threatened or killed. It may happen, but we have peace anyway. That's, that's what this has been meaning to me over the last couple of years, is comfort and peace, knowing that through this sacrifice, I was given assurance of salvation. I was given the Holy Spirit. And although he died, we know he lives again, and he said he's going to come for us, and he's preparing a place for us. That's what I think about now. If you bow with me, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you with with just love and thankfulness 
for what you have given to us. For this, this sacrifice for the breaking of your body so that we could be with you and so that you could give us all these things. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the love you've showed us through that, through this sacrifice. Father, I ask that you, you bless this bread for the nourishment of our spiritual bodies. Forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name, amen. As we're contemplating what the Lord has done for us, let's join together now and sing Nothing But the Blood. <clears throat> and I'd like to sing this the way we've done this a few times where we have men sing, men begin, women answer. In the first verse, we all come together for the chorus. Women start the second verse, men answer, we all come together for the chorus, and then we go back to the men for the third verse. So... What can wash away my sins, right? And the women answer, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right, so that's what I'm talking about, right? So answering, okay. All right, men, we start. <clears throat> what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Continue with, with me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you, Lord, thanking, for the, thanking you for the blood that was spilled so that we could be with you. And, and you showed your love through that, Father, and we are grateful. We, we ask that you bless this fruit of the vine for its intended use. In Christ's name, amen. All right, 
Um, if it's easy for you at this time, would you please be standing and the children and those participating in cow time may be dismissed. <clears throat> There's a message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. reading this morning. Um, Brother Mel Latore will be uh, presenting the message and he told me this morning he's a little sore. A little sore because he played soccer yesterday. Like, what? I mean, I know he said he was 50 in class this morning or something like that, but still for a 50 year old, I mean, I'm older than that, running around. But anyway, Mel, we're glad you're here and we look forward to your message. Good morning. I will be reading from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Again, that is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I sent out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to, you, to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleading to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Jesus Christ. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. To some of you, some of you were in class, and uh, and some of you. Uh, well, I guess not. Those of you who are in first service are not in second service, I guess. But now I've seen you, the, the ones in first service, and now Bible class, and now also uh, um, second service. It is uh, wonderful to be back with you. Of course, uh, COVID has changed things quite a bit everywhere, in Brazil also. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, we came here two years ago in March of uh, 2020 
and now to go back in September 2020. And we have been trying to go back ever since, and we're still here. But God willing, this year we'll go back sometimes. But we are, I'm supposed to be in Brazil right now, and I think I am in Brazil right now. You know, because um, it's very interesting the fact that um, I have been in Brazil every day through Zoom. You know, I explained to you in Bible class all that we're doing every day from one to four times a day, one to four times every day of the week, we're in Brazil. As a matter of fact, I would be preaching, teaching in Brazil this morning if I wouldn't be traveling, you know, and being here in Liberty, uh, Missouri. And uh, this Zoom is magnificent, you know, it is uh, magnificent, it's, it's tremendous. And uh, the fact that we can be at different parts of the world at the same time uh, and seeing people, talk to them face to face is, 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 uh, is interesting. But <clears throat> uh, I'm speaking to you uh, today, and uh, as I mentioned in class, we, we are partners together in the work we do in Brazil. And when I think about that, a book that comes to mind uh, is the book of Philippians. You know, Paul wrote to the Philippians from a prison, from the prison in, uh, in uh, Rome, and he mentioned in chapter uh, 2, uh, chapter 1, verse 2, starting verse 2, grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this, of you all, because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as both in my chains and in defense of confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me of, of grace. The Philippians were partners with the Apostle Paul. You know, uh, the Apostle Paul established the church at Philippi during the second trip, we call second missionary trip. Uh, the Bible doesn't call second missionary trip, but we consider it a second missionary trip. And there were four of them together uh, as the church was established at Philippi. And there were Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. All the four were there. And the first one to be baptized at Philippi was a woman named uh, Lydia. And it's very interesting, it's very interesting that at the very beginning, uh, the, the, the Apostle Paul had the fellowship, the partnership of the Philippians in order to propagate the gospel once he left uh, uh, Macedonia. In chapter four, as was read to you, but I'm going to just mention one more verse. Uh, verse 15 of chapter 5, I read, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, you know, from Macedonia, Paul went south to Achaia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. In verse 16, for even Thessalonica, which is also in Macedonia, which was also in Macedonia, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. I don't think Paul is complaining here. I think Paul is just let them know, hey, we have a partnership going. 
We are working together. You associated with me from day one when I left Macedonia. As a matter of fact, even when I was in Macedonia at Thessalonica, because, you know, there are three cities in Macedonia, from north to south, Philippi, uh, Thessalonica, and uh, Berea. And uh, Paul said, you have been my partners. We have worked together in propagating the gospel once I left Macedonia. So it's very interesting. I, I consider you and others who are involved with me as in the same fellowship of propagating the gospel. We are partners. We are partners together. So as Paul was telling them what was happening, I'm telling you what is happening. You know, all the, the, these years, you know, you have been with me for several years, even longer than 13. I know you have put up with a preacher here for 13 years, right? Well, you have put up with me longer than 13 years because I was here before him even. So, you know, we have been partners together propagating the gospel in, in Brazil. Now, as I consider this book, I would like to mention today three points that I think are very interesting as far as partnership and uh, the work of the Lord goes, okay? The first point I would like to mention is in, 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 in chapter, like I read to you in chapter one, is the fellowship, the partnership of saving the lost. Saving the lost, right? Why are we involved in Brazil? Because we are saving the lost. We are propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. Of course, not only in Brazil. I was looking at your board there. You have a mission work in several other places, like maybe Guatemala and some other, I've tried to remember some other places. Venezuela, I remember that too. And even here, at Lib uh, here in Missouri, you know, Liberty, Missouri, and other places. But also in Brazil, we are in a partnership of saving, in the business of saving souls over there. So we are concerned for the loss. So in this book here, I see the great concern of uh, saving the loss. But it's interesting, here in chapter 1, verse, verse uh, 7, uh, verse 6, I read this again. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I see three things here in this verse. Number one, someone started a, a good work among the Philippians. And as I understand, my understanding is the one who started a good work was God was God, okay, through Paul and through all the other three. said so there were four of them there. But God is the one who started the good work. And then I see another point, the good work. Well, what is the good work here? As I understand, it's the partnership. It's the partnership of the Philippians with Paul in propagating the gospel as Paul left Macedonia, as Paul left Philippi. And he went to Thessalonica, Berea, and on. That is the second trip, as we consider. And Paul had at least three other, three more trips besides this one. And he, you know, he went all the way to uh, Rome, and he went, and he was put in prison. And then he went to other places, you know, such as uh, the the island uh, of uh, you know where, where he left uh, uh, Titus and he went back to Asia Minor, and so on and so on. Okay? So the, the, the good work here is the propagating of the gospel to the Lord. But then there's a third point here I think is very interesting because it says this, the one who began the good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, I think that what Paul was saying, and I might be wrong, but... I think that Paul was saying this. The partnership that God has started between you and I, you are, because the, the Philippi 
brethren were helping Paul financially speaking in propagating the gospel, okay? Financially speaking. They were helping to support Paul, and the indication is they supported Paul all the way to the end of his life. I don't think it was the only church, but we know for sure that the Philippians did that. The Philippi church did that. And I think that Paul is saying this, that our partnership, your partnership with me, your financial partnership with me, propagating the gospel, will save people who eventually will save others, who eventually will save others, who eventually will save others, who eventually will save others in Europe, in the United States of America, in Brazil, and on and on until Jesus comes back. I understand that that's what it means. Did, uh, you heard about the domino effect. I think that's what it is. You know, I, I, I mentioned a, in the first service, uh, you know, I, of course I have until 2 o'clock, so I don't have to worry about time. But I mentioned that when I, I am a, have you noticed that I have an accent? No. You know, no, 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 no. Oh, thank you for not, for not saying that you do. I, I make no difference. Okay. Uh, I came to, I, I am an immigrant, legal immigrant. When I was 20, I was a legal immigrant from Brazil to the United States. I didn't know the church. I didn't know any missionaries. I became a Christian here, became a preacher here, and eventually was asked to go to Brazil to do mission work. But I ended up, by God's grace, an Oklahoma Christian. Okay? And I got a scholarship. I don't know why. I think because I was good looking or something. I don't know. You know, but <laughs> I think it's because I wasn't foreign. <laughs> I got a scholarship to some ladies, stepping stone ladies. You know. And I have, uh, they financially were involved at my, I became a Christian six months later. Their finance helped me to become a Christian and eventually to become a preacher and to become a missionary for over 50 years now. Do you think they have anything to do with what I'm doing now? Financially speaking? I don't think so. I think so. So Paul is saying, the one who began a good work among you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, my son, I have a son who is a minister. He said, whenever he goes to heaven, assuming we all go, he's going to ask God why he created uh, mosquitoes. So he doesn't see any reason for mosquitoes. My wife said she's going to ask Eve why she did what she did. And I'm going to try to find out the influence the Philippians had in my conversion. Assuming there is the domino effect that I'm talking about. So the work that we're doing shall go on until the day of Jesus Christ. Some of you were in class. Remember I talked about 222? Second Timothy, second chapter, verse two. Preparing people who prepare people, who prepare people, who prepare people until the day Jesus comes back. But I'm talking here, Paul is talking about the financial aspect of it. The Philippians were economical partners of the Apostle Paul. So, what I see here is caring for the lost. Caring for the lost. But I see another way of caring here is caring for myself. Each one caring for himself, spiritually speaking. Let me read a few verses on that. Uh, there are several of them, but I'm going to read on about three or four of them. One of them is verse 9 and 10, verse 9 and 10, chapter 1. And this I say, 
that your love, and this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense in, uh, till the day of Christ. Paul is saying, brethren, you're caring for others, My, each, but each one should care for himself also, that your love may abound. The love of each one of you may abound. In chapter two, 1, verse 27, it says, one, only let your con conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Personal care. Care for yourself. You're caring for the lost. We care for the lost. But let us also care for ourselves. If you, one of us should care for himself, spiritually speaking, it is also our responsibility to care for ourselves. Another verse, chapter, uh, another passage, chapter 2, verse 12 to 16, Paul said, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, and not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We like to blame so-and-so because we're weak. Or the church, because the church doesn't do that. But we have our own responsibility for ourselves. We have to work out our own salvation, individually speaking. Yes, we should care for the lost, but we should care for ourselves also. Because as we care for ourselves, we have more condition to care for the lost also. One more verse, chapter 4. Two verses. Chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I, say, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is a hand. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Don't we rejoice when the loss is saved? Don't the angels of God rejoice when that happens? Why am I going to rejoice for the loss and I'm not going to rejoice for my own salvation? I should rejoice also because I'm saved. Not only because I'm helped to save others, but also because I'm saving myself also. I'm working for my own salvation, fear and trembling. I'm rejoicing. Christians should always be happy, rejoicing people because they are working also for their own salvation, not only for the salvation of the Lord. The third point that I notice here is that we should care also for the brethren, for my brethren. See, care for the lost, care for myself, and care for the brethren. Okay, let me read you a couple of verses here. Chapter 2, verse 28 and 30. Paul said this, 28 and 30. Therefore I send him the more honor eagerly, but that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I will be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such a man in esteem, because for the work of Christ he came close to death, not regarding his life, to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. Paul saying, hey, you have a brother there. And uh, maybe he was the minister. Maybe he was an elder. Maybe he was a deacon. We don't know. His name is Epaphroditus. He brought help from you from Philippi all the way to Rome. And boy, those, 
to, those days was it was hard to take help to anybody. You have to carry with you. There was not even public the uh, post office. You know, FedEx, FedEx, or whatever. All these things that we have to send money, you have to take the money by land, by sea. Today, all I have to do is just punch a button over there. I could. You know, you, I could send money to you or you could send money to, you, to me in about a second. You know, even in Brazil. You know, it, it, it's not that way before. Epaphroditus almost died when he made a trip from Philippi to Rome to take help to the apostle Paul in Rome from the Philippians. They always helped to Paul. Care for this man. Care for people like Epaphroditus. You know, they're a great man. They're your brother. He is, they're your brethren. He is your brother. So care for him. Also, another passage, chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. I implore Eodia. I think that's the right way of saying her. If you not forget, it was her sister. And also, I, and I implore Syntyche to be one of the same mind in the Lord. Two sisters. Sounds to me like they were twins or something, you know. And I urge you also, the true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel with the Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose name is on the book of life. Two sisters, hard workers, working. They help Paul. They help those who were Paul. They help another one by the name Clement. They were great workers in the kingdom. Care for them. Take care of them, love them, protect them. Not only caring for the lost, not only caring for yourself, but also caring for the others, those who are your brethren. Also, Paul cared for the Philippians. He wrote a letter to them, to the brethren Philippi. Also, Timothy was another one. Listen to chapter 4, chapter 2. Verse 19 to 24, Paul said this about, about Timothy. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one, one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son that as a, a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how he goes with me. Look at that. I'm sending Timothy. Care for him. Help him. Protect him. He cares for you. Care for him also. In other words, let's also care for one another. One more passage here, chapter 4, 21 and 22. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Do we do that? Do we greet everyone? Look at that. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. It's kind of sad when you come to the assembly and you go back home and brethren don't talk to you. Don't find, don't find out how you're doing, how you're not doing. You have been sick and nobody asks. Nobody cares. If nobody knows, how they're going to pray for you if they don't know? The, I, 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 I tell you, I am convinced the one of the reasons we assemble together is because of one another. You could worship God in your home, but you could not be with your brethren in your home. I think that's the main the reason for the mutual edification we assemble together. It would take me an hour to explain why we assemble together. I'm not going to do that. But I tell you something. Let me tell you something that happened. You know, many brethren complain that they go to the assembly now, but no one talks to them, even if, when they are visitors. 
They don't talk to them. They say, I was at such and such a place. Nobody ever even talked to me. Let me tell you something that happened to me, my wife, one time. I was in Missouri one time. Not here in Liberty. Somewhere in Missouri. And uh, we just moved in. We're going to stay there for about six months or so. And uh, we went to the assembly Wednesday night. My wife and I. No one talked to us. And this before the Bible class was to start. To start, I went up front. You know what I did? I went up front. I, I think I'm supposed to be here. I'm going to have a break here. Who is he? <laughs> is he from this world? <laughs> he came from Mars or somewhere. Is he going to be a new preacher? Who is he? Well, I'm, my name is Mel and I'm a Christian. <laughs> you know, we, then we became friends. Then we talked. We became friends. You see, why should I expect everybody to come and talk to me? Why should I go talk to everybody? Are we not supposed to love one another? Am I supposed to just be loved and not love one another? Love my brethren also? Yes, I'm to care for the lost. Yes, I'm to care for myself. Yes, I'm to care for my brethren. You have wonderful men here working, you know, of course. If you can put up with a preacher for 13 years, you deserve a trophy. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, that's great. It's great. That means he's doing a good job. That means you care for him. You have elders. Care for them. Help them. Pray for them. You have deacons. Pray for them. Work for them. Work with them. Love them. Love one another. Yes, we care for the lost. We should. But I should care for myself also. And I should care for my brethren. What a great book. The book that Paul wrote, the letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians. We are in this business. We are in the business of saving the lost. We are in the business of saving ourselves. We are in the business of saving our brethren. May God give us the wisdom to understand that there is not a better life to be lived here on earth than this one with the three, these three objectives that I see in the book of Philippians. I thank God for your fellowship. We are workers together. But let's care for the lost. Let's care for ourselves. And let's care for one another. I don't know if you offer invitation here or not. We don't do it in Brazil. Do we do it here? Well, it's up to you. Whether you want to be saved or not, it's up to you if you need to get stronger in the Lord. Remember, care for the lost, but care also for yourself and care also for the brethren.
if you are not a Christian yet. We care for you. We care for you. We pray every day that you might be saved, that the lost will be saved. If we can help you at all this morning, come to the front here as we stand, as we sing, or you can talk to anybody here because they, the brethren, the children of God, care also for the lost.